Hi, in this project I'll show you how to build a talking alarm clock that is synchronised to Google Calendar. So why am I doing this? Well, I made a similar talking alarm clock back in the 1980s using an 8051. Sound samples were stored on EEPROM which were bank switched in. The 8051 doesn't have much address space and so my 4 megabyte EEPROMs had to be paged into the 8051 address space. Each sound sample managed to fit into that address space. I had just enough sound samples to say every possible time and date combination, as well as my baby daughter crying as the alarm. So 30 years later, I want a bit of automation. The new clock we based on DF Robot's Fire Beetle, which is an ESP32 based board a 24 by 8 LED matrix, and a mini MP3 player to hold the sound samples on SD card. The Fire Beetle is very similar to Adafruit's Hazar, and in fact you could use it instead. Using the Arduino IDE, you will have to, of course, add in the Fire Beetle URL into the board manager, and install it. Then onto a day of coding up everything. Mm -hmm. yeah, okay. That's about it. Once finished, I loaded it up onto the Fire Beetle on my prototype board. This is the Fire Beetle. This is the MP3 player, and this is the Essential Logic Level Converter. And there's a small LDR that can adjust brightness of the display automatically. And three buttons to do stuff with. And this is the end result. The time is 11.40. Nice, eh? So, on to making it a bit more permanent. Finding a box that fits is always the difficult part. I don't yet have a 3D printer, so finding one that fits is a bit hit and miss. But this one looks pretty good, and will just fit everything in. So I marked out some Vero board, scored and snapped it to size, then filed down the rough edges, and it all fit in well. With this small case, it was difficult to fit in my large speaker, so I used a smaller one I picked up from a junk pile. I reckon placing it just above the MP3 player would fit well. On to marking out and dremeling the copper tracks that I don't need connected up. And then cleaning it up with a bit of metho. This time round I soldered everything directly to the Vera board as space was tight. And there you have it. First I soldered up the logic level converter to the MP3 player. I'm starting to use old Ethernet cable for hookup wire, as it's a nice solid core and cheap. Then onto soldering up the MP3 player bus line. Then the power ground lines from the ESP32, which I ran on top. Every time I solder up a connection, I'll remove it from the breadboard, just to make sure I have everything. The speaker was held in place with double sided tape and then sold it up as best I could. When I do this again, I'll make sure the speaker comes out the top and not out the side. When cutting down the headers, you can hold your finger over them to avoid them flying around the room. This can be a little painful. So you can also get some blue tack, which will not only stop your finger being pierced, but stop them flying around the room. Now to check if it all fits in, but it seems it's just a fraction too big caused by the LED display header pins. So I marked out where the header pins were located and dremeled out the case so the pins would fit. Yep, that's all that was needed. Next onto some buttons. I picked these up from some useless junk as well and drilled out three holes for them to fit. Then secured them with super glue. Notice I glued just the sides. This was to avoid super glue getting into the button and stopping it from working. Next I soldered up a header for the three buttons and used some old hookup wire to solder up each of the buttons with a common ground wire. Next onto the LDR. This was set up as a plain voltage divider and allowed the ESP32 to easily discover how much ambient light was around so it could auto dim the display. And there you have it, a nice little package. Next onto the Google Calendar side. First you'll need to log in to Google Drive. Click on New, then connect More Apps, search for Scripts, 
and connect that to your Google Drive account. Then click on New again, then Google Apps Script. This will open up a blank project. You'll need to fetch the Google script from my GitHub page and then paste it in here. Save it as anything you want. The name doesn't really matter. Then you want to publish the script. Select Deploy as Web App. It'll then ask you who has access to this app. Select anyone. You might be concerned about the security of this, but you'll see why this isn't an issue later. This will ask you to review your permissions. All it needs is access to your calendars. Click on Allow, and here we find the reason why I said security isn't an issue. To access the script, you'll need a very long URL, which sort of acts as a password anyway. So I don't think it's an issue. In a later revision of this project, I'll add in login security as well. Make sure you record this URL as you'll need it later. Next open up a calendar, then My Calendars drop down and Create New Calendar. You can use any name you want, but once again you'll need to record this for later. Now you can create events in this calendar and your alarm clock will go off for every event you create. Back in the Arduino IDE, make sure that you have entered in your Wi-Fi SSID and password and also the Google script URL that you recorded. You can also update your time zone and NTP server in this file. And if you really want to get creative, you can update the HTML for the alarm clock web page. If you're ever hacking with my code, there's also some useful debug defines you can use in the debug.h header file. Next you'll need to load up an SD card with the MP files from my GitHub page. If you want to create your own, then check out the documentation on my website. Make sure you place them in a folder called mp3. The alarm mp3 file should be placed in a folder called 01. Next plug it in. The clock will flash NTP until it gains a sync with whatever NTP server you set. Once synced, it will display 24 hour time by default. The middle button selects several different display modes. I use the CSTRF time function within a structure to display the time so you could update and change it to anything you want. This structure will also change what is said based on whether a date, time or both are being displayed. The date is August 6, 2017. Go to Google Calendar, set an arbitrary alarm point and there you go. Beach Boys, what a way to wake up. Pressing any button will turn the alarm off and speak the time for you. I mentioned a web interface before, well here it is. Pretty simple, but you have access to all the functions of the clock. So there you have it, 30 years later, and I have something that is miles better than the original. I'll be shortly making a PCB and 3D printed case for this project, so you can make your own and avoid all the unnecessary soldering work. I'll also be updating this project periodically and adding new features every so often, such as better security, multiple calendar syncing, louder amplified audio, and the ability to change the MP3 file played from Google Calendar. So check my website or my Hackaday project page for updates. If you make one yourself, it'd be great to hear about it in the comments below. Thanks for watching and see you next week.